in this episode, I'm going to discuss the Vario Hawaiian Gardens game. Vario Hawaiian Gardens is a Hispanic game from a small city in LA County called Hawaiian Gardens. Their game has been around for several decades. The Vario Hawaiian Garden game, also known as VSG, and the Hate Game are surrounds and have some rivals that are surrounds like Artesia 13. But they're most known for their crimes against other races, a lot being African American. It is often said from the VHG's end that a crypt from another area took the life of a VHG member. So the outcome of that was the VHG's trying to remove African Americans from the city of Hawaiian Garden. From 1995 to 1997, more than three dozen crimes were committed against the African Americans who were living in the city of Hawaiian Gardens. All of those incidents were pinned to VHG. Some of the most known things they have done in their communities were incidents like in 1993 when the VHEs threw a firebomb in the window of a woman and her children, also vandalizing and writing slurs on her home. In 1996, an African-American man named Martin was walking down the street and was shot, ending in him losing his life. A Hawaiian garden man named Rudy was charged for the shooting. The same year, Martin's uncle Michael was viciously jumped by the Hawaiian Gardens members. Not too shortly after, an African-American LA man named Virgil was visiting his parents who lived in the city of Hawaiian Gardens. He was chased by a group of Mexican men and women. Once they caught him, they beat him till he was lifeless. 2005, a member of the VHEs took the life of a police officer. The day prior, he tried to take the life of an African-American man. 2009, the VHEs were targeted in a gang injunction called Operation Knockout, putting over 80 members in jail. With that being said, I'm going to discuss some cases members of their gang were involved in. June 17, 2005. David worked for a man named Pirate painting cars. After David finished painting the cars, it was around 2 a.m. Pirate offered to give David a ride, which David accepted. But Pirate had to stop to pick up money for a completed job. Pirate drove to 223rd Street in Hawaiian Gardens. David noticed a man walking while driving. After not being able to find the person they were looking for, they drove by a casino. Pirate and David were approached by the same man David seen walking earlier. The man asked Pirate for a cigarette. Once Pirate said he didn't have one, the man called over two other men. The man pulled out straps and Pirate tried to drive away. But the man shot up the car, causing Pirate to crash. David drove back to the casino and got a security guard to call 911. Pirate lost his life. David picked a man named Carlos out as the shooter, but later recanted his statement. A break in the case came when a woman named Paola told the police that several men from the Hawaiian Gardens wanted to rob Pirate and take his stereo equipment. Juan and Omar were both charged and both received life sentences. August 1st, 2007. Police were on patrol in Hawaiian Gardens when they heard about eight shots. They pulled up to see VHG member named Edward. Edward said, it was them right there. They the ones that shot at me. They're right there. Police caught up to the car and were led on a chase. Eventually, the police arrested two men who were in the car. Police asked one of the occupants of the car named Luis what happened. His reply was, don't ask me. You know what happened. I can't say a thing. The police found the strap and Luis' fingerprints was on it. Luis was associated with the Artesia 13 gang, rivals of the Hawaiian Gardens. Luis received 30 to life for the shooting. January 13th, 2008, around 8 p.m., Joseph, who was in a wheelchair, was wheeling himself down Ely Avenue in Cerritos. He was approached by a green van full of men. The people inside the van said, where are you from? Joseph replied, nowhere. The man from the van said, yeah, you sporty. You from Artesia. Joseph said, I'm in a wheelchair. I don't bang no more. The driver told the passenger to finish Joseph off. They shot at Joseph shooting him in the armpit, which lodged in his back. Before they could shoot anymore, neighbors came out yelling, we're calling the police, and the van drove off. A neighbor got a description of the car and memorized some of the license plates. Four days later, men in the green van held up two men, taking their phones and their wallets. Both men gave a description of the car and the license plate number. A young man named Andrew was picked up in the van. He told police Miguel was the other man in on the crimes. Both Andrew and Miguel were from VHG. Because of Andrew's age, he only received nine years. 
but Miguel, he received 62 years to life. In 2011, the Lopez brothers lived in VHG's turf. The Lopez brothers included Jose, Oscar, and Eduardo. None of them banged. Jesus, Roberto, and Alexis were all from VHG. Jesus' brother-in-law lived across the street from the Lopez brothers' home, and Jesus lived behind the Lopez brothers' home. So for several months, the VHG members jumped the Lopez brothers' fence and walked through their yard often to get to Jesus' brother-in-law's house. July 1st, 2011. Jose and Oscar went to Jesus' brother-in-law's home to resolve the issue with them jumping the fence. Roberto and Alexis laughed and called the Lopez brother Pisces and said they were going to do whatever they wanted. The three Lopez brothers later ran into Jesus, Roberto, and Alexis at a store where the VHG members would make fun of them and call them Pisces again. The Lopez brothers left the store and the altercation. Both groups had an altercation on the street the Lopez brothers lived on. Roberto walked up on him and said, I'm from Hawaiian Gardens. This is my barrio. I'm going to hop the fence if I want to. Roberto threw up his set and challenged Oscar to a fade. Oscar became angry and socked Roberto in the face, leaving him dazed. Jose then punched Alexis to protect his brother, Oscar. Jesus began to shoot at the Lopez brothers. Jose was shot twice. Oscar was shot at, but not injured. The VSG members left after the shooting. All three VSG members were charged in the shooting and are all eligible for parole in the next 10 years. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, check out my previous videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.